The terror attacks of 9-11 changed the trajectory of the United States, but they had just as big an impact on China, and America's response to 9-11 would have dramatic repercussions for the nation wishing to challenge it as the world's sole superpower. Just prior to 9-11, China was enjoying its meteoric rise from a third world nation to first world leader. It had been humiliated by the United States over its ambition to reunify Taiwan by force, with the latest humiliation being in 1996 with the third Taiwan Strait crisis. The crisis began with Taiwan's president, Li Tenghui, accepting an invitation to speak at his alma mater at Cornell University. This angered China, who saw the invitation as a provocation and recognition of Taiwan as an independent country. China immediately mobilized its military and launched multiple volleys of missiles over the island. The U.S. responded with the biggest display of military might in Asia since the Vietnam War, sailing multiple combat vessels, including the USS Nimitz and its entire battle group, through the Taiwan Strait. China was humiliated by the display of force, unable to challenge the U.S. right off its own coastal waters, so the nation worked to slowly remove the U.S. as the most influential regional power. China worked to improve ties with former Soviet republics in Central Asia, as well as influence Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, and Thailand. It undertook massive infrastructure projects in nations from Afghanistan to Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia, building telecommunication networks, power stations, highways, ports, and airports. Beijing was working to strengthen their ties with the neighbors that shared similar cultural values while undermining their relationships with the U.S. Its goal was simple, deny the U.S. the regional foothold it continues to enjoy to this day and edge it out of the South Pacific forever. In order to undermine the U.S.-led world order that emerged from the Cold War, China encouraged multilateralism, hoping to erode American hegemony and prevent it or any of its allies from challenging Chinese ascension. It was on a full-blown charm offensive. But while most nations enjoyed the economic prosperity that came from its ties with China, they weren't buying Chinese multilateralism. In the new global age, China remained uncompromising on issues such as human rights and was growing increasingly assertive over false territorial claims across the South China Sea. Soon it would move on to full-blown bullying and nearly sinking vessels from other nations, mostly using its maritime militia forces so as to avoid military provocation. And then September 11th happened and China discovered that it wielded only a fraction of the global political power that the U.S. did. China's immediate response was a condemnation of terrorism everywhere, calling it a common scourge of the international community. President Zhang Zemin, in what was seen as a high point in U.S.-China relations, offered deep condolences and his sympathy to President George Bush. China itself had been the victim of extremist attacks from the Muslim population in the Xinjiang region, who had harbored deep hostility toward the Han Chinese for centuries and wished for their independence. To try to prevent this extremist violence, China had cultivated ties with the Taliban in Afghanistan, hoping they could influence Uyghur extremists. This relationship was complicated, though, and produced few dividends. However, China was invested in ensuring that the Taliban remained in power, fearful of losing what little influence they had in the region. This naturally put China at odds with the United States when the Taliban refused to hand over al-Qaeda operatives in Afghanistan. China urged that while the U.S. had the right to defend itself by dismantling the terror networks that it had targeted, it needed to act only as part of a U.N. operation. But this was self-interest at best. As a permanent member of the U.N. Security Council, China could then be able to wield great influence over any U.S. campaign against the Taliban sheltering al-Qaeda. This was only half the story, though. Because by turning the U.S. military response into a U.N. operation, China could then use its leverage as a member of the Security Council to draw further concessions from the U.S. China could promise not to veto any U.S. anti-terrorism operations in exchange for the promise of ending weapon sales to independent Taiwan. This alarmed Taipei, which warned the U.S. that China must not be allowed to exploit the war against terrorism in order to damage Taiwan's national interests. The U.S. agreed, and Secretary of State Colin Powell denied that any quid pro quo with Beijing would take place. China attempted to earn some goodwill by backing UN Resolution 1373, which affirmed the United States had a right of self-defense against al-Qaeda and the Taliban government that sheltered them. However, it continued to deny that it had any links to the Taliban itself, despite U.S. forces discovering hundreds of Chinese rockets, RPGs, mines, and rifles in both the Taliban and al-Qaeda camps they raided. The tide was turning for China, which was shocked by the global support that the United States had garnered in the wake of September 11th. While it had labored for decades to increase its influence, it saw most of those efforts vanish in the immediate aftermath of September 11th, as the world largely came together to support the U.S. Switching tact 
China began to cooperate with the U.S. on counterterrorism issues, even dispatching a team of counterterrorism experts to Washington to brainstorm ways the two nations could coordinate. China, leveraging what it had learned from its relationship with the Taliban, even shared intelligence with the U.S. on al-Qaeda, which was put to immediate use by forces on the ground. As with most things when it comes to relations between nations, this wasn't pure altruism, though, as China too had a vested interest in seeing extremists stamped out from Afghanistan. China even allowed the FBI to establish an office in Beijing as the two nations worked together to dismantle al-Qaeda and various other terror networks' financial links. The Chinese Communist Party exploited the opportunity to stamp out what it viewed as opposition groups, notably Uyghur insurgent movements in Xinjiang, although its police actions targeted even peaceful pro-independence leaders. Fearful of U.S. action in Afghanistan leading to the flight of extremists to its western border, China sealed the border with both Afghanistan and Pakistan and stationed troops on high alert across the long border. The nation also pledged to aid in the reconstruction effort after the war, pledging $150 million in funding and shipping large amounts of food aid to Afghani refugees. China even floated the idea of sending Chinese troops as part of a UN peacekeeping force after the US withdrawal. Meanwhile, though, other segments of Chinese society were reveling in the September 11th attacks. For some Chinese, the fall of the Twin Towers was a symbol of America's humiliating defeat, it becoming a victim of its own pride and hubris. Students particularly took on to posting electronic message boards their sentiments toward the U.S., with one calling the U.S. a paper tiger with a soft underbelly. Chinese official media played down the attacks and the casualties they'd caused, which to many observers suggested a great reluctance to admit that the U.S. was the victim and had the right to defend itself. China was officially walking a thin line. On one hand, its government publicly condemned the 9-11 attacks and promised unconditional and principled support to the U.S. On the other, it played down the significance of the attacks domestically and did little to quell the rising anti-American sentiment that came with it. Chinese officials believed that Afghanistan would become a second Vietnam for the U.S. and believed that by encouraging the U.S. in Afghanistan, it would become bogged down and then require international aid. In exchange for such aid, China would pressure the U.S. into concessions on Taiwan. Much of these assumptions were being fueled by Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, which was double-crossing the U.S. as it had its own vested interest in keeping the Taliban in power. Pakistan's ISI provided everything from training to medical aid for fleeing Taliban and al-Qaeda fighters, who sought refuge in the northern tribal lands of the country, where only the U.S. Air Force was allowed to operate. When U.S. drone attacks struck terror targets in the tribal lands, ISI was there to fan the flames and help paint U.S. strikes as attacks on innocent civilians. The fact that terrorists don't wear uniforms made their job that much easier. However, both China and the ISI were surprised by the speed of the Taliban and al-Qaeda collapse in Afghanistan. They'd expected a protracted and difficult campaign for the U.S., similar to Vietnam. Instead, the U.S. overwhelmed Taliban and AQ forces within months, turning what Pakistan and China had expected to be a quagmire into an ongoing police action requiring only a fraction of the U.S.'s resources. Despite a 20-year operation, the U.S. was not in fact quagmired as China had hoped, and its military was fully capable of global operations despite fighting two insurgency campaigns simultaneously. This was catastrophic for China. Not only did it leave the U.S. immune to forced concessions on Taiwan, but it left the U.S. military still fully capable of responding to a Taiwan invasion. Even worse, the U.S. continued to enjoy and even grow popular support in some South Asian nations that China was attempting to woo away from it. The infamous Charm Offensive would end up failing to shift the U.S. from the region, and recent expansions of U.S. access to military airfields from friendly South Asian nations leave the U.S. and China at the same place they were on September 10, 2001, except China has even fewer friends in the region now than before. China would go on to take a much harder line against its Southeast neighbors, driving many even further into the arms of the U.S., including Vietnam, much to the surprise of Chinese officials. Now go check out why Osama bin Laden attacked the U.S., or click this other video instead.